Hello, and welcome to the Culture Track at the third annual Python Web Conference. I'm Laura from Six Feet Up, and I am thrilled to welcome Mason Egger as our next presenter. Awesome. Thank you very much, Laura. Great to be here. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mason Egger, and I am a developer advocate at DigitalOcean. Today's talk that I will be giving with you is called A Year Without Pants, Strategies for, a success, for Successful Remote Work. Um, if you would like to follow along with these slides, they are already posted on my website, mason.dev. So uh, if you go to go to that site, they'll be the first thing that's posted, uh, should be up like at the top of the page. And uh, here we go. So a couple of quick things about this presentation. Um, this presentation is basically a collection of recommendations and tips and tricks and things that I've learned over the years um, while working at DigitalOcean. Uh, DigitalOcean was a remote first company long before the pandemic. So um, like I actually was working remote before everything went down last year. And I, there's a lot of really good tips that we've that I have been taught from my colleagues at DigitalOcean. Um, the things in this in this pandemic are not a prescription. It's not a if you do this, you will have a great remote experience. Um, everyone's work rhythms are different. Everybody do has to do different things to get themselves like ready in the morning or, you know, productive at home. So I, I can't just give you like a, here's four things on a checklist, do that, and you'll have a great remote experience. But what I can give you is I can go through a lot of the tips and tricks that myself and my colleagues at DigitalOcean have pulled together over the years to make a successful remote culture. So what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Um, I would say though, that if you are going to try something, give everything about two weeks. So like, if you're going to try a new routine or a new like work time or anything like that, anything that you see in this presentation, give it two weeks before you determine if it's working or not. That gives you time to kind of get into the habit of doing it, get, uh, move forward, just get, get ready, get accustomed to like, I'm going to wake up at this time of the day. These are the things I'm going to do in the morning. Um, and it lets you kind of figure out if that routine's working for you. And if it's not, stop doing it. It's all about optimizing for you. Um, it may find a, take a while to find what works for you. I started working at DigitalOcean in October of 2019, and I really don't think I fell into a remote work groove until probably February of March of 2020, which oddly enough is when the pandemic started. But I was just starting to feel you know comfortable with remote whenever everything hit. So don't worry if you don't immediately get um, like if it doesn't immediately feel natural to you, it's not going to feel natural to you immediately. It's going to definitely take some time. Um, I will say though, now that I have worked remote for the better part of the year and I'm part of a very successful remote culture, um, I don't think I'm ever going to willfully go back into an office. I am now, I am way more productive at home than I ever have been in my career. And I, I really love it. Like once it takes time to get it right, but once you get it right, you may find yourself at levels of productivity that you've never experienced before. Um, and hopefully I can help you get there today. So tip number one would be to establish routines. Um, routines help you get ready mentally. Um, they kind of set your brain and like, okay, we're, we've done these three things. That means this is coming next. And it allows us to start our day and focus on our work. So I would say go ahead and start your day like you're going to work. Like you will like imagine you were going into an office and start your day. You know, wake up. I, I take my dog out because he usually has to go to the restroom, bathe, get dressed, brush your teeth, just do, do these routine things. Um, it's very tempting to fall back and not like and kind of lose some of these routines whenever you know work is literally either a walk across the house, you know, right next to your bed. Um, but these routines really do help us kind of get in the mindset for remote work. Um, I found that rolling out of bed and walking over to my desk is not sustainable long term. Yeah, I do it on some days if I've slept in or just not feeling it. Um, and it'll work for a little bit, but it doesn't, I, I have found for myself that it, it doesn't really kind of get me prepared for success. If it works for you, hey, great. That's awesome. But for myself, I found that that doesn't really work. Um, establish working hours. So, and you need to enforce these, you know, when you worked in an office, you worked from nine to five or 10 to six or how, whatever you went into the office, 
Um, and work creep is real. Like now that we're at home and where we are performing our daily tasks at home, it's very easy to let work just kind of permeate its way through all of our lives. And we really have to guard that, guard against that. So enforce these work hours. If you work from nine to five, set your calendar as like, as your working hours in there, or if it doesn't allow that set away, dis discourage people from scheduling any sort of time during that. I definitely, you definitely have to guard, guard against your time. Um, you may have to work outside of your working hours on occasion. Like we all worked overtime at some point, um, but it should not become the norm. Um, do not routinely check email or Slack after hours. Um, I set my Slack to zero notifications at 5 p.m. And I do not check it unless I really feel like it. So it can't happen. Like I could be bored, you know, on the couch. Maybe I send a message at the end of the day and I'm waiting on a response. Um, and maybe I do check it, but I never feel compelled to check it. If I'm checking out my work email or my Slack after hours, it's because I feel like I want to. It's more often than not because I'm bored or because I'm curious about something. But if you don't set this, you could be getting messages at all hours of the night, um, whenever you're a remote workforce, you you become global. Like it becomes easier to hire people across the globe. So people work in different time zones. I'm the only person. I believe I'm like one of the only persons in my entire in the entire organization. It's like de developer advocates are in marketing at DigitalOcean. I'm like one of maybe two or three people in a forty person org that's in Central Time, uh, because I'm out of Austin, Texas. So it's very likely that I'll be getting messages. Really, a lot of my coworkers are in New York, which is where DigitalOcean's main office is, but a lot of my coworkers are also on the West Coast because a lot of them live in California and Oregon. Um, so you have to set these, otherwise you're gonna be getting notifications at all time. And then that work just starts creeping in some more. Um, discuss with your manager what your working hours are gonna be. Some managers are totally open for you to work four tens, I would love to work four days a week and work four tens um, because I do speaking engagements and stuff. I It's not always an option, but some some weeks I actually do. Um, I know a manager at DigitalOcean who allows the people to work whatever hours they work. One of his editors was in Hawaii and that's very far uh, different in time zones than continental US. And essentially he had a rule where um, if you have to be available for meetings, if someone puts a meeting on your calendar, then you need to, within the working hours of the comp, business hours of the company, you need to be available for that. But outside of that, if you want to work, if you want to sleep all day and work all night, as long as you're available for when the company needs you in meetings, he really wasn't concerned about it. So just talk with your manager. You'd be surprised. And managers, if you're in this call, you have to kind of like, you kind of have to give your, your employees some, some space. We're all adults. We should all be trusted to be able to do our work and get our work done. When I do my work, really, as long as it's not tied to a meeting or tied to a live presentation, if I write my current blog post at 3 a.m. in the morning or 3 p.m. in the afternoon, that should not matter at all. As long as the work gets done, the work gets done. Don't skip meals. Um, one of the recurring themes you're gonna see in this talk is uh, routines and giving yourself breaks because people who work from home are really bad about giving themselves breaks. Um, meals allow you to give your brain a rest. It allows you, like you would get, like if you were in the office, you would get up, you'd go warm up your food, maybe in the microwave. Maybe you'd go downstairs to a food truck. You know, this is a break from work. If you don't take this break, you're constantly on and it doesn't work. You have to give yourself breaks. So give yourself the reason to eat, to eat your meals. Um, I would recommend from eating a very large meal. One of the things that I tend to do, I tend to eat too much at lunch and then I'm just a zombie for the rest of the day. And that happens. So uh, you'll be sleepy. Don't eat a big meal. Um, but don't definitely don't skip meals. You need these small little breaks in your work day. Um, create boundaries between work and life. Work life boundaries help determine when it's time to work and when it's time to relax. Uh, determine how much you want to have your work spill over into your life and vice versa. Some people really enjoy being like on all the time. And some people are nine to fivers and that's totally fine. Whatever is working for you is your thing. I've definitely become more of a nine to five advocate when I can, when I have to go work. Um, if I have to go, you know, if I'm at a conference, which I haven't, we haven't done in a very long time. Um, or if I'm doing like presentations elsewhere, 
um, you know, obviously that doesn't work as well, but you know, you need to, you need to set boundaries and you need to adhere to these boundaries. Um, some people want a hundred percent separation from work. Some people want to be able to take a break from work and go and do the dishes. I know some colleagues that have, that are lucky enough to have a spare bedroom in their house or apartment or wherever. And they don't like other than that bedroom and maybe the uh, restroom next, next to it, they don't go, they don't engage with the house. They don't go do um, housework. They don't go, you know, they, they may go downstairs to make their meals, but they may pack a lunch. Like they really want that separation. So that way they can like, whenever it's time to leave work, they can close the door and work is gone. Um, and then there's some people like myself included, um, I like to like, I'll take a 15 minute break and I'll go downstairs and I'll do a chore. It, again, it's giving my brain this time to like rest, process what I'm currently trying to do, maybe come up with a solution. Um, if you're struggling to, uh, to create these boundaries, everyone is even, even remote, even in companies where remote work is like very prevalent, like a digital ocean. Um, a lot of people struggle with establishing these boundaries and getting into a rhythm. So if you're, if you're finding it difficult to get into these rhythms and stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. You're, you're not, you're not abnormal. Everyone struggles with this. It is definitely something that takes like training and it's definitely something that takes time to just get used to. Um, there is no right or wrong way to create this separation of life. There is the way that works for you. And that is the only way there is, uh, what works for you and what works for some of my colleagues, are completely different. But at the end of the day, it, we, we should be, you know, goal driven. And if our goals work, then we should be fine. And we meet our, if we, sorry, if we reach our goals, then everything is good. So find what works for you and stick with it. Don't like, you can take advice from others, but no one should ever, no, no one should ever tell you, oh, that's the wrong way to do it. There is no wrong way. There is just your way. Working space. Um, having a dedicated working space is a must. Um, you had one in the office, like you had a desk, you used to go in and you sat at a desk every day. Uh, you still need one at home. It may not be the same thing as what your office one is, but it definitely needs to be there. Um, you, this really does work in creating the separation from home and work. Like this is where work is done. This is where play is done. This is where relaxation and family time. This is zoom meetings for days. Like we really need those two separate segments. You need to be able to, if you can, Create a space in your home that is dedicated only to work only. Yeah, you should definitely do that. Um, being able to walk out of the office is important. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a spare bedroom. So I actually, whenever I moved, because I was going to be remote, I intentionally looked for something where I was going to have a spare room that I could convert into a full-time work office. So if you're lucky enough to have a spare bedroom, it's a very good idea for you to convert it into an office if you can. If you can't, creating up maybe like maybe you have a dining room you never use and creating a small section over there. Um, maybe you have like a corner of the living room, maybe a maybe like I wouldn't want to work in a garage. It's hot in Texas, but maybe if you live in some area where it's not as uh boiling hot or freezing cold, it might work for you. Um, but yeah, try definitely create a separate space. Um, and try to isolate it if you can. Like I know some of my coworkers don't have this, but they have like foldable panels that they have purchased um, that they put up around them. So it kind of isolates them away. Um, closing your laptop lid can have the same symbolic effect as closing the door or leaving the office for the weekend. So you need to like create these experiences where like when the laptop lid is closed, work is done. I don't do it anymore. It doesn't get to creep its way into my life. Now, another big one that's really useful um, is actually and this is going to be kind of strange, but commute to and from your remote job. Um, I know some people do this in a lot of different ways, um, but you, you're used to being on a commute, which is actually part of your established routine. You used to get up in the morning, do all of your stuff, and you would drive maybe to work. Maybe you would take the train. Maybe you would walk to work. Um, but you're used to, these are part of the routines that get your mind into the mood for working. So you really need to do it. Um, from work, honestly, is probably one of the, is I would say of the two, commuting from work, quote unquote, is especially important. Um, I know some people who honestly like go out of their house and they drive, they, they walk around the block or they'll take their vehicle and maybe they go pick up like Starbucks every morning and come back or they'll drive around the block or maybe a bike or something. But they do this commute 
um, to and from work because they need to be able to one, get ready for work and decompress from work. Um, I saw a post on Twitter from a friend of mine uh, who basically had posted that they, during the time of the pandemic, he had felt that he was getting a lot shorter with his children. Like he was a lot more snappy towards them and just not as, you know, and he felt bad about it because he wasn't being like, you know, a very fun dad. He was being very short with them and he was all trying to figure out what was going on. And it's because he didn't realize, or he hadn't put two and two together that he used to have a 30 minute commute after work between work and home. And without that, he went immediately from being frustrated at work to being frustrated at home. So the commute from work really is vital. I do this every day. I personally listen to a podcast. I listen to some music. I recently bought a subscription to Masterclass and have been watching a lot of these videos. But I, I, I close Slack. I close all work stuff. I, I have a couch over here. I sit on the couch. I turn this TV screen toward, or this monitor that I have here towards the couch and I listen or watch something for 30 minutes. And then I leave my office to go do work because it allows me to decompress and be ready to deal with my partner. Um, and this, I, this is just this one. I cannot harp on this one enough. I really do think this is absolutely vital. It sounds a little weird, but it does really help. Um, you know, listen to some music, a podcast, read a book. You know, if you're used to writing the train and reading a book, you can read a book. If you're used to commuting in a car, now you can read a book because, you know, you don't have to worry about crashing. Um, just do something to give yourself this kind of buffer between work and life. Take breaks. This is definitely one of the most important ones. Um, you are used to interruptions in the office. You're used to getting up and going and getting some coffee, maybe going to the restroom, walking over to someone's desk and asking, you know, how was their weekend? Yeah, all of these things, these little breaks give your brain time to stop thinking about work and kind of expand, maybe like work on the problem in the background. Our brains are great at that. Um, and if you don't have this, if you, when you're in remote, it's very easy not to do this. It's very easy to not get up and go get coffee or go talk at someone's desk because you don't really have these things. Or maybe you, don't, you probably don't have someone that's co-working with you, maybe your partner. Um, so you have to create these works for yourself now. Go for a walk, get a snack, read a chapter of a book outside of your workspace. I, I will very often go downstairs and I'll just take a walk around the block, um, get a little bit of sunshine, get a little bit of exercise. Whenever you work from home, uh, you work, you walk a lot less. You don't have to walk to the car, then walk to your desk and back. You know, my office is the bedroom across from the, the bedroom across from my mat from the master bedroom. And um, it's, you know, it's five feet. So it's, I'm not getting anywhere near as much exercise. So getting this walk is actually really, you know, it's good for your health and it's good for allowing you to take a break. Uh, perform small tasks around the house. Some people like doing this. Some people don't like doing this. I love doing this. It gives me five to 10 minutes where I can go downstairs and I can empty the dishwasher. And while I'm emptying the dishwasher, I'm thinking about what I'm doing next. I'm thinking about, you know, maybe like, how am I going to phrase this thing in a blog post? What, what's wrong with my code? How am I going to fix it? Um, and at the same time, my house gets cleaned, which is awesome. So you, if you, if you feel that you can do this, uh, perform a small task. Now you have to really worry about, um, basically, uh, distraction creep because may maybe if you've ever seen the entrance to like there's an entrance episode of Malcolm in the middle where he goes to like change the light bulb well that's going and he goes to the drawer to fix it and the drawer squeaks he's like oh well now I have to fix this and he goes to get a screwdriver and that he can't he goes to and that breaks and you basically you wind up all the way down this tr this chain you, you basically just keep popping stack uh, tasks up the stack and you have to resolve them. So distraction creep is a thing and you really have to watch it. One of my favorite things to do is to start prepping dinner. Um, I used to eat out a lot and now I can go downstairs, take 10 minutes and I can maybe cut up the protein that I'm gonna be cooking for dinner or cut up the vegetables or if I'm doing something in the crock pot, get it started. These small tasks are now multi-purpose. I can now take a break from work, which we were all doing in the office in the first place. Everyone was doing this, whether or not you called it taking a break. Maybe you just sat at your desk and zoned out or sat at your desk and read Twitter for five or 10 minutes because you know you needed a break from work. Now I'm able to actually get something else done while taking the break and I personally love it. It's one of my favorite parts of working from home is that I can cook dinner during the day and have it ready at the end of the day because usually by the time, if I, if I wait till five o'clock to cook dinner, I'm tired and I'm exhausted and I don't want to do it. Um, get out of the house as needed. You're stuck in the house a lot. If you can go for a walk to a park, if you can go for a drive um, and just like, just drive around, drive somewhere, come back, um, go for a bike ride. Just, you're going to need to get out of the house. It's, it's really, really difficult to stay in the house all the time. I think my record 
was like I I stayed in the house like did not leave for I mean like even like walking out the door for like two weeks and by the end of that I was just I, I couldn't take it like I needed to get out so now I go for a walk around the neighborhood I um you know take a quick little drive to a park to walk to play with my dog and stuff like that so you do need to get out of the house um otherwise you'll just kind of become I think it's like trapped in here uh so yeah highly recommend taking breaks you gotta get out of the house um gear your office equipment is important. It was important in the, uh, it was important in the office. It's important now. Uh, work provided you with equipment when you were in the office. It's necessary. It did, it's necessity did not disappear when you started working from home. Ergonomic chairs and standing desks. You've got to take care of your health. Um, you have to like I. This is a standing desk. It's an IKEA standing desk. Um, this chair is very cushiony and very ergonomic, and I like it. But you've got to take care of it. You know, if you're bent over something like this all day on a, on a hard wooden chair, you're gonna be in pain, and you're gonna you're gonna be doing long term damage to yourself. And so it's worth the investment to get them. If you're lucky, maybe your company gives you a stipend for remote work equipment, um, and then you can spend it on that. But definitely take care of yourself with chairs and standing desks. Try to stand a little bit if you can. Um, because just sitting is just bad for us. And we know that, like, this is nothing new. Noise canceling headphones. These are an absolute must for me. I have a partner who's here. I have a roommate who is a musician who plays drums and trombone. And if I did not have these noise canceling headphones, I would not get work done. So um, they are an absolute must. And a good pair of headphones are, you know, they're a little bit, they're a little bit on the pricey side, but trust me, they make your life so much better. Again, like I think whenever I first started at DigitalOcean, like we had a stipend for headphones because they know from a remote culture standpoint, headphones are a necessity. Um, outage proof equipment. Now as a developer advocate, I don't have a lot of this because if my power goes out, unless I need to do a presentation, which I do have a go bag for that, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're like an engineer or an SRE or something where like, like you're in the middle of an outage and you have to fix the, the, the something that's wrong, outage proof equipment really does help. So getting like an interrupted power supply to make sure that if you do like lose power that you at least can shut down your computer properly. I know some people have like their, their internet and their PC and everything plugged into it. So if they lose power, they can still work for about an hour um, and then they start to panic. Um, having a mobile hotspot is really useful uh, if you want to if you just want to work remote. Like one of the amazing things about working from remotely is I can work from anywhere. If I want to get into my truck and drive out to the middle of nowhere, as long as there's internet access, I can work from there. Um, most of your phones have these now. I used to actually own a physical hotspot, um, but my phone does it, and I don't need it anymore. So I haven't owned one in a long time. Um, having a go bag with basically all your cables and stuff ready to go to like. Well, this is this is kind of like more of a pre-pandemic thing, um, but like being able to go to a coffee shop or uh, some place, alternative location where you can work is valuable. Um, so just being ready, like being prepared. You never know when outages are going to strike, both power and code. And sometimes they just happen to happen at the same time. And you just have to kind of be prepared for that. Socializing. So a big one that I uh, that I hear a lot from people is like, you know, they miss the in-person um, of being in the office. They miss talking with people. They miss having chats with friends and stuff. And like, and I, I get it. I miss that stuff too. With remote work, it just means we have to work a little bit harder at it. Um, we used to get lunch with our coworkers. I used to get lunch with a, with a coworker every single day um, before the pandemic started. And now, now I haven't done that in a very long time. Happy hours, team offsites, which I'll go over later. Um, even just walking up to someone's desk allowed us to socialize. In the remote world, you have to schedule it. Um, host virtual happy hours via video call. Um, I join one every single Friday that I spend talking with some of the people at DigitalOcean and I absolutely love it. And we end up talking for like two or three hours. It's, we call it the beer hangout. Everybody gets a beer and we just hang out and chat. Um, and it's really fun. I personally don't drink, so I don't have to have a beer to be there, but I still hang out and we have a good time with each other. Um, this is a great way of finding out what's going on in other parts of the company. Like this is open to the entire company. And I, I have people from engineering coming in, like, this is what's happening today. You're like, this is what we're working on. And it's really awesome to have, um, to have this kind of like just transparency that I actually, even in real life, I never would have got because how often do you, do your teams communicate 
Well, and how often does your company hold an all company office, a happy hour? And even if they did, how often do you communicate cross teams on a weekly basis? So I actually feel like some of my socialization has gone up due to remote work because we have, we don't like limit ourselves to just team happy hours. We have company wide ones as well that people join every week. And it's really awesome. Um, have an optional open video call for everyone to have lunch or coffee daily. And I think we have this as well, where everyone can, it's, we just join a hangout and we have coffee together, chat and leave. Offer these daily on a weekly basis. You have to offer them regularly. A once a quarter happy hour is not enough socialization. Humans are social beings. We have to be social. And in remote work, you have to go out your way to make it work. Schedule one-on-ones with each team member on your team on a regular basis. I have a one-on-one with every single member of my team every single week. And then I have a lot of friends in the company, people that are inside of like maybe marketing people. Like I work very closely with the editorial and developer education teams. So I schedule monthly one-on-ones with them. And yes, you're going to get more meetings because of this. More of your time is kind of kind of like, I guess you would say dry up, like your calendar is going to look more full. But this is what you, you were doing this in the first place in the office. Like at the end of the day, you have to remember, you were already having these one-on-ones. You were already talking to your coworkers, you know, sitting next to them, turning, turning to them and, you know, just having a conversation with them. You were already doing this. It's just, you never actually tracked the time of it. And now that we have to do it virtually, it just looks like, oh, I have more meetings now because of it. No, we just scheduled things. We scheduled our natural inclinations into meeting blocks and it looks it looks worse, but it's in reality, it's the same thing you were already doing. Um, join hobby Slack channels. Uh, I've worked at three different companies that had Slack. I have never seen more hobby Slack channels than I have at DigitalOcean. Um, these are a lot, I just find they're a lot more prevalent in remote first cultures and re- remote first companies. We have like one for musicians, for gaming, for Linux, for BSD, for Magic the Gathering, for Pokemon. And, and like we actually chatted them. Like the musicians channel at DigitalOcean has like 200 people in it, and everyone's constantly posting videos and recordings of like their work and stuff. And it's encouraging. And it's just really fun. Like you get to socialize with people doing this. I know that we've ho- hosted a couple of virtual jam sessions together. Like it's really awesome. So you have to join these channels and then engage with them at, again, but at your you know comfort level. If you're not social, don't do it. But if you need the social socialization, you can get it. Um, I would say get a pet. I actually did get a dog before I started working at DigitalOcean, but he really did help um, beforehand. It depends on your level of social, your level of commitment. Um, some of some people may have children, and I feel like that's social enough. Um, I, I don't have any children yet, but like dogs are really useful. Um, for social, if, if, if you're looking for something social, don't get like a ficus because they're not really social. So if you need that extra level of socialization, um, then get it. If you don't, don't. But it does. It definitely did help me uh, become more social. So yeah. Protect your time. This one is super important. So um, remote work tends to lend itself to a lot more meetings. This is just the nature of the game. Um, so you have to schedule your meetings wisely and protect your time at all costs. As I said in the past slide, like you may have more one-on-ones with people that you would have naturally had in the first place. Um, but now they just, your calendar looks a lot more booked. So you have to protect your time. Um, I personally have designated a meetings day. This is something that I learned very early in my career. Um, and I love it where if I'm going to burn a whole day on meetings, then let's burn the whole day. Like, don't send me 10 meetings a week and have two on each day. That that breaks up my time. Developers work on what's known as a creator's um, mindset, where there's a creator's mindset and a manager's mindset. A manager's mindset or manager's time, time handling goes from meeting to meeting. What meeting do I have next? Now I'm going to this meeting. Creatives take a while to get going, and then we get into these long stretches of productivity. And dropping a meeting, like dropping a meeting, if you're working from like, eight to 12 or nine to nine to nine to 12. And you drop a meeting at 10, 10 30. You have now broken up. You you've made the early part of the morning useless. And you've made the late lap, like until lunch useless. It's a terrible place to drop a meeting. So you have to protect these, have a designated meetings day and say, if we're going to have meetings, we're going to have them all on one day because, and like get in that like manager schedule mindset where you're using all of your meetings at once. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, Block off heads down or do not disturb times on your calendar. I have no meetings Monday, no meetings Friday, and I have heads down time from one to five every single day of the week. The only time that people are supposed to schedule meetings for me is from nine to 12, Tuesday through Thursday. Now, does that happen all the time? No. 
Um, people do tend to schedule over because at the end of the day, like I can't like the company all hands can't be pushed off because Mason doesn't want to have a meeting there, but it does discourage a lot of other meetings. Some people will look at the, like, sometimes it just gets dropped there and I have to deal with that. But more often than not, people will either one ask if they can put it there, in which case I'm usually pretty open to it. I actually have it in my meeting description. If you'd like to schedule me here, please ask. But like, this is my time to be actually getting work done. Um, or it just, they, they look for another time. They don't even ask. And then they just put it in the spot where I actually want to have meetings. And it's very valuable. Um, so definitely schedule off, block off time on your calendar. Please don't bother me here. Go away, shoo. Um, because it does work. Don't default to let's put something on the calendar. So if someone, if someone has a question and you're like, let's put something on the calendar, that's, that's a bad way to like really get a lot of meetings really quickly. Um, try to come up with solutions asynchronously first. It really does help to have asynchronous solutions. Um, and remote work is about asynchronous work. And I'm going to go into that, I think, in the next slide. Um, when you're heads down or when you're in focus mode, remove all distractions. Slack is a black hole of productivity. Like you can throw an infinite amount of productivity and Slack will eat it all up. It's like Chrome with RAM. Um, it eats it all and it's gone. So whenever I go into heads down mode, I, I usually set my cut my Slack heads down. I put like a little emoji. I think it's like the headphones emoji and I completely exit Slack and I do not check Slack until I am ready to check Slack again. Um, you do not need to be a hundred percent available all the time. Like with and again, we're going to go into this in the next slide, but remote work is about asynchronicity um, and we have to get in there. So I close Slack. I close Discord. I My phone does not show up any sort of like, like I've got the heads down time on the Android and like I don't get notifications from half my things until five o'clock in the afternoon. When I go heads down, I need to go heads down. Um, my manager has my personal cell phone number. If the world is on fire and I am absolutely needed, he is allowed to get through at any time. Um, and he will call me if he needs me. I've worked here for a year and a half. I've never had that happen. Um, I would imagine if you're like an SRE or an engineer or something that that actually could happen. But um, like, that's what you should do is that if I'm needed, you can call me. And if you want to extend it to your team, you can. But like in reality, if it's, if it's made its way up to my manager and he they need me and he has to need to call me, then it's something probably horrendous and we have to fix it immediately. And that's worth calling me over. But other than that, you can wait until 4.30 or five whenever I go off of silent and I check my notifications for me to respond to you again. So this, this only works if we embrace asynchronous work. Asynchronous work is the heart and soul of remote work. So we have to be able to do handle things asynchronously. Globally distributed teams are not possible synchronously. People work in different time zones. I, when I first started at DigitalOcean, I had someone in mountain time. I was in central. Someone was at Eastern time. And then someone was in some European time because they worked in Israel. Um, there are teams that I've seen span across third, like from Hawaii all the way to Eastern Europe. And they're on the same team. So it's impossible to synchronously do stuff. You may get maybe one or two hours a day where it's not you know, awful to talk with these people. Like if you're not going super early in one person's time and super late in another, so you have to embrace it. So one of the best things you can do to embrace asynchronous work is remove useless Slack messages. Hey, do you have a minute? Can I ask you something? Are all absolute productivity killers. I see these messages. They've told me nothing and they've broke my distraction. It's useless. Send your me message. If you want to send a greeting, send it in there, but keep, but immediately explain your question and what you need. Like put it in the original message text. Like, hey, so-and-so, hope you're doing well. I need this from you. Can you do X, Y, and Z? Send it all in one message. It saves so much time. Um, and it's so valuable. Default to message threads instead of meetings. If you can answer things asynchronously, then do it. Um, do not just try to avoid the meetings at all costs if you can, because you're going to have a lot already. Some meetings are necessary. You have to have meetings. Okay. That's, that's the nature of the fact of life, but like, Hey, can you get on and explain something to me? Can I explain it in text? Now, if it's like a pair programming session, hundred percent, let's do it. Let's do a pair programming session together. That's in my mind, not, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's not, that's, that's actually work. That's, I don't count that as work time I, or as meeting time. I count that as work time. Um, but you know, if there's something I can send you a doc for, let me send you the doc for it. Um, remove meetings that can be channels and threads. So if you have a slot, like if I have a, a, a weekly sync with people, 
Why can't this just be an update in a Slack channel? Um, do you really need that 15 minute morning standup? My last job, we did all of our standups in Slack. I We sent a, hey, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm blocked on. My manager was able to see it. People sense it when they were working. Do we need standup? Like, do I, act, like, does me go, do us going around the room and saying the exact same thing we would have said a Slack message, does that matter? Now, if you're using it as a socialized socialization aspect, then yes, it 100% matters. And please continue to do that. I'm not telling you throw standups out of the, out of the road, out the window. But if you're not using it as that, if, if it's basically, if it's like very strict where it's like this, 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 then that can be a Slack message and you don't need to do it as a meeting. Um, realize that others work, may not work the same hours of you. This is really important. So like I have a, my, uh, my VP has two very young children and gets, um, gets rest and sleep as necessary. <laughs> um, so sometimes I get 3 a.m. Slack messages from him. Um, I wake up to the messages. I respond to them as soon as I can. He, do, he knows that this is the case. And he, I, there's a great article. I wish I, if I can find it, I will send, I will tweet about it. Um, follow me on Twitter, by the way, cause you'll see all of my fancy stuff. Um, and basically like, you have to just like be able to send someone a message. I need like request, continue working on stuff, like get the request, come back. It's literally context switching in operating systems. I like, I, I, am, I am, like waiting for IO in an operating system, like waiting for mouse input. I, I send off the request and then I come back and I work on other things. And whenever the request comes through, then I will handle it and I will deal with it whenever I am ready. 100% context switching and operating systems is how remote work should work. It should be asynchronous. And you have to embrace it. If you try to, and that's where I feel like a lot of people in the pandemic um, struggled with this. And this is where companies, we also have to realize that we were not, everybody didn't go suddenly remote. The world is being held hostage at home. And now everyone's being forced to be remote in companies that, have, that haven't put in this kind of guidance, these kind of guidelines, this kind of work culture. Um, so I would imagine that most people's struggles with remote work is because of the desire to keep the, remote, the work synchronous when the work has become very asynchronous and where, the, where the, the times have dictated an asynchronous culture. That would be my guess. Remote company culture. These are things that you that your company needs to be doing. Um, companies have to modify their current culture to evolve and support remote work. This is this is trying to do office style culture in a remote setting is the same thing as trying to lift and shift a giant VM and put it in AWS or DigitalOcean. Uh, it's not a good idea. Like lift and shift doesn't work. It doesn't work in tech, and it doesn't work in remote culture. Um, so you have to modify it. You have to have offsites for both teams and your entire company multiple times a year. Your teams need to get together and socialize and spend some team building time together. My third week at DigitalOcean, we had our global all hands, believe it or not, at Disney World. We all flew down. They they or they got, booked out an entire, basically an entire resort for us. We took the convention center and like almost so many of the hotel rooms. And like, we would spend like three days, like we, we, we were in meetings, we were in team building sessions and stuff, but at night, the time was ours. We could hang out, we could go to the bars and stuff, go, go to the, go get really cool food, spend a lot of time just seeing everybody. You know, we don't work together. We haven't seen each other in over a year. Um, it was amazing. I had just started, so I didn't understand it. And then of course, give your employees one day to have fun. So like we did three days of work and then everybody got an all of uh, an all parks past all the Disney parks for Thursday. And we all just went and had fun with each other and like got to have fun and do things. Like you have to have offsites uh, for teams. Everybody travels to a town and they just hang out. I know one team uh, in digital ocean that they hire the largest beach house. They can, they, 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 uh, not hire, they rent the largest beach house they can find in the off season. So it could be like November and it's got like 10, 12, bedrooms everybody has their own bedroom and they all just go hang out they order they get a bunch of groceries and they just have fun with each other for a week in a beach house somewhere and that's definitely uh it's definitely very valuable invest in your employees you need to have internet and gym stipends there are things that offer snacks as a service i think i literally have one right here this is the one that they send us this is a box it comes with snacks every month i get like 10, 15 small little snacks that they send us, you know, make them, make your employees feel like you forgot about them and send them stuff. Like if you're asking people to work from home, the least you can do is pay for their internet and gym stipends. Um, 
it's not that much money compared to how much money it costs to seat somebody in an office to, you know, between the physical real estate, the electric bill, the, all those kind of things. Um, it's really easy to do that. So you have to invest in your company. Um, invest in remote friendly software and practices, um, allowing for resources to be available remotely via the VPN is really valuable. This was another thing that a lot of people really struggled with when the pandemic started is people weren't used to accessing the VPN and having to get access to company resources outside of work. And this created a lot of tension and a lot of problems for people. Slack licenses, Zoom licenses. Um, we have this one uh, app that we use called icebreaker.video where before all of our marketing all hands, we get together and it like, it pair, everyone joins with their camera and their audio and it pairs everyone up and it leads you through like an icebreaker event. And it's like, it's a one-on-one -on -one with someone and you answer silly questions. Like, would you rather be a frog or a dolphin or something like that? Really valuable. And it just kind of creates this team building adds to that socialization aspect. Um, guard against excess meetings, but don't discourage them. People are really good at knowing which meetings are vital and which meetings are not. Um, we're actually like engineers are amazingly good at that because when they leave it and they come out with it, with an action plan, they're like, yeah, that's what we need to do. Or they leave it and they're like, that could have been an email. We're really good at determining what they are. So definitely do it. Um, simply saying we have too many meetings helps no one. <laughs> um, all it does is really discourage people and it kind of makes people maybe cancel meetings they didn't need to cancel and it kind of creates a problem. So definitely don't have like, don't just be, we have too many meetings. Like don't bring a problem without a solution. Um, check out a book called The Year Without Pants. This is a dive into WordPress's success with remote culture. This was actually um, a free ebook that every new hire at DigitalOcean can get access to. Like they, they'll, they'll just buy it and send it to your Kindle. Um, and it's a book that's very valuable. There's a lot of really good tips in here, but remote work is definitely um, really awesome. And I really like it. My final thoughts, I know I'm running uh, out on time. Um, remote work is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Um, like there, we will go back to the office. People will, but a lot of companies will opt not to because they've learned that they can function this way. And if you have large plots of real estate, like I used to work for a company that just built a 17 story skyscraper in Austin, Texas, um, that sat empty for the last year. That's a lot of money just going down the drain because they wanted, it. they're going to, companies are going to realize that if we can do work from home, it's more cost efficient to send you home. Um, when executed and supported properly, remote work can be highly productive, if not more productive than work. I am more productive remotely than I ever was in an office um, because I'm allowed to live my life, do what I need to do during the day. And as long as my work gets done, nobody seems to bug me about it. And that's how it should be. Um, companies that don't offer remote work whenever this is over are going to see an exodus of employees to companies that do offer remote work. Like I'm not going to work. I'm not going to work in an office again. Like I personally have made up my mind that I will only work for remote companies going here and out. It's on my LinkedIn. It says, if your job requires relocation or, of, or being in an office more than 10% of the year, I'm not interested in working for you. And a lot of people are going to, are going to feel this way. Don't get me wrong. There will be a lot of people that don't. And if you want to go back to the office, if you think that everything that I said is complete hogwash, Hey, that's totally fine. That's hundred percent up to you. Um, but personally, I've never been more productive. I've never been more happy in my role. I've never, I've never been better in my career than when I started remote work. And I hope that some of the tips that I've given you today will have, will maybe change your mind about it. Maybe it'll give you something to try. Maybe it'll make things a little bit easier for you going forward. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want uh, to see. Like I, I tweet about remote work. I tweet, tweet about a lot of really fun things. My slides are up on my website if you want them. And I'm now available for questions. And I am going to head over to the live thing as soon as we have to leave. Um, but thank you, everyone, for attending. And I hope this was useful for you.